Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back. So for today's video, I thought it would be fun to kind of revisit a concept I have done a while ago. I don't even know how long it's been. I feel like it's been so long. Maybe not that long though. Um, but at some point in months past, I made a video on this channel about Bratz reproductions that I wanted to see happen because obviously Bratz has been making a lot of reproductions lately. And so I thought it would be fun to go back through their original catalog and talk about the lines that I most wanted to see become reproduction lines. And so today we're going to be doing that but for Monster High. Obviously we got the reproductions of the original dolls. I know that those were a whole thing in and of themselves because they were so hard to get a hold of, but we did get those in theory at least. <laughs> and then I think this year they're planning to do a second line of reproductions for like the second wave of Monster High dolls. I'm not 100% on that info, but it's at least a theory that's out there. And so I thought it would be really fun to talk about the Monster High lines that I most want to see become reproductions. This is with the idea in mind, of course, that like they'd actually be accessible. <laughs> so like assuming that they would be widely available, these are the lines that I think would be really cool to see. Of course, as we go through, if you have different lines or just thoughts on the lines that I talk about, I would be so happy to hear what you want to see come from Monster High Reproductions in the comments down below. And if you find yourself enjoying the video, if you could give it a like, that is super helpful to me. And lastly, if you aren't already subscribed and you enjoy what you see, maybe subscribe for more. But yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the lines that I think Monster High should reproduce. Also, these are in no particular order, like I'm not like, oh, this is my favorite one or my least favorite one that I think that they should reproduce. These are just like in a random order, um, ones that I thought should be done. And the first one is actually one of my favorite Monster High lines, and that is Freak de Chic. I just loved this line, and whenever I talk about it, a lot of you guys tend to chime in in the comments telling me that you also really love this line. I just think it was so unique. It was very thematic, but it also felt like a theme that was so close to like Monster High. They just seemed to mesh together so well. I thought this was an excellent line. The playset would be a fun thing to reproduce because it's like a whole adventure, you know, like it's a whole line that they could reproduce. It's not just a couple dolls. There's the playset with Rochelle that is the only playset that I actually own and it's so fun and so cool. There were a lot of really unique dolls, like Goliope was the first 17 inch doll that we got and she's obviously very unique. Just basically almost all of the dolls from this line I think were so stellar. I love the Honey Swamp, I love the Twyla. The only one that I have talked about this before I'm not a fan of is Claudine and that's because I know that her and Twyla were like exclusives. I think to Target, I could be wrong, but they were some sort of exclusive and so they had a slightly different theme. They were supposed to be more black and white. You physically cannot convince me that it's not weird that Claudine is such a vastly different color than her original character. Like, I know Twyla has a slightly different skin tone, but it's a lot less aggressive than Claudine's, and I think that's weird. So, in saying that, if they redid Freak to Chic, they could always change Claudine to be less oddly a different skin tone, <laughs> and maybe, you know, it would be better. I just, because I love the design for Claudine, but she looks so weirdly pale and gray, and I get that it's a black and white theme, but something about that just feels suspicious to me. That's not the point of this video, so sorry. Um, but I think Freaky Chic would be really cool to reproduce the dolls that were so amazing and so many people love, and then have redemption for that one weird one. I just think this would be a really cool one to see. Then I was thinking about swim lines, and personally, my favorite Monster High swim line was Swim Class. I just think that those dolls are so interesting and fun, and they definitely cater more to my specific taste. However, that is not what I'm talking about here. I think that either Skull Shores or Gloom Beach should be reproduced. Obviously, like I just said, I like Swim Class better, but I think that both Skull Shores and Gloom Beach are much more iconic Monster High doll lines. Like. I think that those tend to come to more people's minds when they think Monster High Swim, and they do have some really, really cool designs, so I'm not saying that, like, they're ugly. I just like Swim Class better, but I think that these are way more iconic, and in some cases they have much more unique designs too, so I think either one of those interchangeably could be a really cool reproduction line, just because, again, I think that they're super iconic, even beyond the swim theme. I feel like those are just weirdly iconic Monster High lines, and so of course, if you're going to do a reproduction, you want to do a really popular line, and I feel like either one of those could be a really good idea to do. Next up we have got Sweet 1600, and again, this is one that I just feel is like one of those lines that 
people who have been fans of Monster High for a very long time tend to think of when they think of Monster High. At least I do. Maybe I'm just completely wrong. <laughs> you guys will have to let me know in the comments. But it feels like a pretty iconic line to me. I know that they are making Monster Ball for G3, so like, there's some similarities there, but I still think that this would be a really cool line to reproduce. Kind of like Freak to Chic, uh, we don't have a whole playset, but Draculaura did have a Roadster that released, so that could be a cool addition to reproduce. And then the other thing was that Sweet 1600 was the line in which Cupid was released, I believe. Um, the only Cupid doll that ever was in Monster High, because then she moved to Ever After High. And I think it would be so cool to get Cupid reproductions, just because this, again, was the only time we saw Cupid in Monster High. The design was so fun, so cool. Like, I love this doll. I think she's so interesting to look at. So, especially for Cupid, I think that this would be a great line to do. But then beyond that, I know that people do get bored of seeing kind of the main cast of characters all the time, and I definitely get why, because I also would like to see more obscure characters. But looking at it from Mattel's point of view, kind of like, trying to low-key convince them, <laughs> like, <laughs> to do these reproductions. There is kind of the core three of Draculaura, Frankie, and Claudine in this line. So, I feel like it's a solid line to reproduce, because you have, like, the more obscure character with Cupid, you've got the main characters, you also have Claude in there, so that's pretty cute. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I feel like this would be a good line to reproduce. <laughs> Okay, then this one. If you guys have been following me for a while, you probably know that I'm not obsessed with sweets-themed dolls. I think that they can be done very, very well. I just personally don't tend to vibe with the designs. Like, they just don't connect with me. However, I know that Sweet Screams is an unreasonably popular Monster High line, so of course it has to be in this video. <laughs> like, these were, even though I don't really like them to the point where I don't think I would buy them, I understand that these were so, like, high design and so iconic and so sought after within the Monster High fandom. There's some really, really amazing designs here. And again, like, even though I don't personally like them necessarily, I can see that. Like, I can see the heart that was put into these. I can see how interesting they are and detailed. And there's just nothing quite like them, right? Nothing quite like Sweet Screams. And I just feel like this is an untapped market that Monster High could tap into. Like, obviously, again, if the reproductions are actually easily available, so many people want Sweet Screams dolls. So I feel like so many people would be interested in the reproductions. I, to me, there's like no reason not to make this, you know? <laughs> okay, then next up, this is a very small line, but still one that is near and dear to my heart, and that is the Scary Tales line. It's actually called Scarily Ever After, but despite the fact that I have literally one job, I did mess that up, so it will continue to be called Scary Tales because I can't just change what I said. I have the um, Draculaura back here, but this was a line with Draculaura, Frankie, and Claudine based on different fairy tales, only turned into scary tales. These were so, so cool. Again, I know it's a very small line, and it is the core characters, so it's not especially interesting in terms of doing different characters but again that is extremely marketable for Mattel and these were just so interesting and fun I feel like the way that people feel about Sweet Screams is how I feel about the Scary Tales line they also were a Target exclusive in the States so they were a little bit less widespread I feel like if they made reproductions of these and it wasn't like an exclusive it was just you could walk into any toy store and find them that would be so so cool I just feel like these designs really hold up. You know, like, some of Monster High's designs are cool, but you can very clearly see that, like, oh, that was, like, a product of the 2010s, like, the fashion's a little bit outdated. I feel like these really hold up over time, design-wise, and so I think that they would carry on very well into 2023. Especially, like, imagine that they did a reproduction, but then they also did a new one. So it's like, oh, we're doing reproduction of Scary Tales, but we're also going to add in a new character too. Not like a new character, but like they add in an Operetta one or like a Twyla one or something, you know, like they do a new addition to the line. That would be so sick. Oh my gosh. I'm just, I know I'm dreaming. Like I know that probably none of this is ever going to happen, but I'm making myself excited here. <laughs> okay, next up is Ghoul's Rule. I don't have any of these dolls and like when they first came out, or when they at least were on shelves and available, I feel like I wasn't super interested in them, and now I regret it. Because even though they're not all, like, particularly my taste, 
They are all so cool. Like they have such interesting designs and so many details and they're so dramatic. Like these are such fun dolls to me. Again, we have like kind of the main lineup with Dracula, Frankie and uh, Claudine, but we also have Cleo and then we also have Abby. And like, who doesn't love Abby? Like she's got so many cool designs and I think this is one of her better ones. I just think these are all so sick and so interesting. I don't know, I feel like they have a lot of the detail and the drama and the intense theming that Monster High was known for with G1. And I feel like people would really love to see these today. Like just the idea of seeing these on shelves in 2023 gives me like low key chills. <laughs> I just think that they're very interesting. It's kind of a darker line, like a lot of the colors that they used are a lot darker than in other Monster High lines. But I love it, I'm here for it and I feel like Mattel should be making these again. <laughs> Okay, then this one might be like not the best necessarily because it is a very large line, but I think it would be so interesting to see Boo York redone. Mostly because I think there are so many interesting dolls. It does have a very good balance between like a core cast and then like more obscure characters, I suppose you could say. Because we do have Cleo and Deuce and then Draculaura and Claudine, but then we have Operetta who is like not quite as main a character, right? We have Caddy and Nephra, and then we have completely new characters that were introduced with Boo York. I probably don't know all their names. Maybe. Mercedes, L, Luna. I got it. I got it finally after staring at her for a second. And Astronova. I, I think I actually got all those. Oh my gosh, look at me go. But yeah, like those are so many new interesting characters that only got one or two dolls. Like I think that the trio, Mercedes, Luna, and L got like two versions, but Astronova got the one doll. I don't know, I just feel like Boo York was such an interesting line. I feel like a lot of the designs are really, really cool. And again, there's a good balance between characters that are super iconic to Monster High as a franchise, and then more like obscure, interesting characters. Maybe this wouldn't be as profitable. And again, I know it's a very large line comparatively to reproduce, but like, when I was looking at lines like this, Freak is Chic is obviously also very large, but Boo York just stands out to me for some reason. I couldn't tell you why. Like, I don't know if that's a popular opinion or not, but I just feel like that would be kind of sick. And then to round out the video, the ones that I most aggressively want to reproduce for one very specific reason, Dawn of the Dance. Again, I feel like this is a very iconic Monster High line. I feel like a lot of people love either most or all of these dolls, or even just one, but like they love it a lot, you know? I feel like people really like this line. I feel like it comes to mind when you think of Monster High. And Dawn of the Dance Laguna would be included. <laughs> Again, if you have been on this channel for a while with me, you might have heard me talk about the fact that I think Dawn of the Dance Laguna is just a spectacular, super fun design. I would love to own that doll, but um, I don't have the kind of cash on me right now. <laughs> but she's just so, Cool, and a lot of the other dolls are really cool too. I have the Dawn of the Dance, Claudine, very lucky to get her second hand, and I love her dearly. I know a lot of people like the Dracula from this line. Like, I feel like there's a lot of fandom love for this line. It's five dolls, the whole core cast of characters here, so I feel like it would be very marketable. Not too many dolls to have to reproduce. And I could get my hands on the Lagoon. <laughs> this one is a little bit selfish because I'm literally just like, oh, if Mattel reproduced Dawn of the Dance, I could buy the Laguna design without having to spend tons of money on her second hand. But like, you can't really argue with me, you know? Because <laughs> I'm right. I feel like a lot of people feel that way, that they would love to get their hands on one of these designs, but they're so expensive and so like relatively hard to find in good condition and with all of their pieces. So it's not just me, like it definitely would be helping me, but I'm sure it would be helping a lot of you guys too. So this is the one that I most strongly would like to see. Again, for very selfish reasons, I know that. But also objectively, I do think that this would be a smart line to reproduce and an interesting line to reproduce. So I feel like it should happen. But yeah, guys, those are going to be all of the Monster High lines that I think they should make into reproductions. Again, I know that this isn't necessarily like realistic, especially given how odd the original reproduction release was. It's not necessarily something that I should be expecting. Like, they're maybe gonna do another one this year, but like, past that, who knows if they'll bother to reproduce any more dolls. But I just like to dream. I just like to get excited thinking about theories about what could happen. 
Um, so yeah, even though I know that this isn't likely that any of these dolls would be reproduced, I still think it would be really cool to see it. So I hope that you guys could enjoy going along with me talking about these lines. As I said before, I would love to hear if you have different lines that you'd like to see reproduced. Drop them in the comments, let me know. I might have forgotten about some, so like, I would love to talk about it with you guys. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day or your night or whatever it might be, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys!